weapon in game and then finally I'm going to show you how to create a macro for that weapon that will allow you not only to uh, fire it without opening your character sheet but that will also allow you to set a dice pool for the weapon as well and so this this should be able to help speed along uh, combat quite a bit in your games. Uh, GMs can do this exact same thing with the NPC sheets, although there are a few other tricks to it that I won't be talking about right now, but uh, that I might cover in a future tutorial. So now let's open up a character sheet. Uh, we have uh, my Twi'lek named Olasi and uh, she currently does not have any weapons. If you look, uh, we're going to start by always have, being on the character sheet. We don't want to be using vehicle group, companion, or NPC sheets for our PCs. We're always on this one. And uh, if we go down to the combat section, we see she doesn't have a weapon yet. There's no weapons that are in this section. So the first thing let's do is let's give her a blaster pistol. And to do that, we're going to click the Add button right here and that's going to create a uh, blank weapon form for us to fill out so we're going to put in the damage real quick six damage three critical uh, I'm not going to fill in the encumbrance or the hard points for this weapon but you could do that if you want to that's not necessary in order to make the game the weapon functional in game then we're going to for the make and model we're just going to call it blaster pistol you could give more information if you wanted to, but it's good to fill this in, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, the blaster pistol has a medium range, so we'll make sure we fill that in. It uses the light, ranged light skill, so we've got that filled in. And uh, the rest of this you can put in if you want to or not. It's up to you. The only other thing that I would recommend you fill in is the qualities for the weapon. In the case of this particular weapon, the quality includes stun setting, which I'll type in right here. <clears throat> so now we have all the information we need to play with this weapon in game. We can fill some of the rest of it in if we're interested in just having it so we have more information at our fingertips in Roll20, but it's not necessary. Now, uh, let's suppose that Olasi uh, later on buys a blaster pistol that's improved in some way. Well, and so we want to get rid of this one and we want to add a new one. Uh, well, to add a new one, all we do is click the Add button again, and that will create this new uh, weapon for us, a second weapon on the sheet. If uh, we want to then later decide we're tired of this older weapon, we want to get rid of it, we can hit the Modify button over here, and that will create a trash can symbol at the top of each of the weapons and to get rid of a weapon you just hit the trash can and it's gone. And then after you do the modification uh, you hit the done button uh, to complete the process there. Now when you're using one of these weapons in game and, and incidentally before I get to that for the damage calculate the damage with the strength bonus for melee weapons. Just go ahead and put the full amount of damage for it in this field right here. Now when we're using this weapon in game uh, the nice thing is that we can um, roll it straight from the character sheet. So I want to fire my blaster pistol. All I do is hit this dice button that's right here in the middle of uh, the weapon screen and Boom, there we go. We see the dice rolled for a lossy on this particular weapon. Now the nice thing here is we can see not only how much damage this does, so we can quickly do the math. 6, 1, 2, plus 2 is 8 total damage. But we can also see what we need to get it to crit. We can see what its range is and if it has any unique qualities that's helpful. This is particularly good when you're using melee weapons that have pierce in them. Uh, you've got some grenades that have blast qualities. It's nice to have those qualities spelled out in the chat after you use the weapon. So that's why I always recommend that you fill in this qualities section on the weapon screen. Now, of course, you're also going to need to add some difficulty dice into this check to make it more interesting. And so 
uh, we can scroll back up to the top of the character sheet and the, see the dice pool there and uh, we're just going to make this an average check and maybe because we're aiming we'll go ahead and put a boost die into it. One thing I might not have mentioned in a previous tutorial that's really important in this spreadsheet or, or in this character sheet is that after you select the your dice in the dice pool you need to click outside just like I did just now of the field of the whatever the last dice was that you increased or decreased the reason for that is this does not register for example if I go here I go from 0 to 1 it does not register into the dice pool until I've removed the focus from that field it's just a little thing that you have to get used to in using the character sheet. It's not perfect, but it's awfully nice. So now we've built our dice pool. We've added two difficulty die. We've added one boost die into the check. So when we roll for the weapons check now, you can see we have the extra dice that are factored in. And we get a zero. Uh, no advantage, no success when, we, uh, when we've added those, those things into the roll. Uh, when you want to clear out your dice pool, you just hit this button right here. It's really important after every check to go ahead and clear out the dice pool just to make sure that uh, you're not going to have any problems with it. Now, that, that's the basics of firing and using your weapon. That's everything you need to know to be able to use it in game. But wouldn't it be nice if from the tactical screen right here, while Olasi is moving around the map, if we could somehow cause her to fire the weapon without having to open our, our character sheet. Well, let's, let's see if we can pull that off here. Going back into Olasi's sheet, uh, we see that we have just rolled. The last thing that we have in the chat screen is a... Uh, a roll for that blaster pistol. So that's important. We want to make sure we have that in there. And now we're going to quickly discover a macro for this. And to do that, I am going to uh, I'm going to make one change here to one of the screens that I've got. So be patient with me for just a second. We're going to remove the chat as it exists right now, and I'm going to add a chat screen that includes the text box that's below the uh, chat screen. So here we go. Okay, there we go. So now we can see on the screen the um, the chats the uh, chat uh, screen with uh, the text box for input below it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly create a macro for this blaster pistol. This is really easy in Roll Twenty. It works even this same technique will work even outside of the Star Wars system. If I put my cursor down here in the text box for the chat screen like I'm about to type something into chat and then I hit the up arrow on my keyboard what I get is a macro for um, the role that I just made and that is actually not a macro for the role that I just made because the last thing I did was reset the dice pool so let me go ahead and roll for the weapon again here there we go. Okay, so now the last uh, macro or the last command that I ran in the system was to roll for the blaster pistol. So now I'm going to put my uh, cursor down here in the text box and I'm going to hit the up arrow. And what I get is a ready made macro that has everything that I need to do this attack. So now I'm going to select all this text with my cursor. I'm going to cut this text and then going back into the character screen I'm going to hit the attributes and abilities uh, tab and then on the ability side I'm going to hit the add button and this 
creates a new macro for me. Then I hit the edit button, this, this small little pencil here, and I can call this blaster, we'll call this macro blaster pistol. Then I go down into the screen. This is waiting now for the text of my macro. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste, control V, or right click and then paste the text that I just pulled out of the chat box over here. And so now I've got my macro named. I say Blaster Pistol. I click on the checkbox right here beside it. And we're almost ready to go. Last thing we need to do is click on Show as Token Action. What that means is that any token that's tied into this character sheet, we're going to see that macro as a token action. So let's go test this out. Uh, here's our Olasi token right here. And if we click on it, what do we see up here? Well, among some other macros that are available, uh, in this environment that I'm running right now, we now see her blaster pistol macro. So when she wants to fire her pistol, all we have to do now is click on her token, click on blaster pistol, and boom, uh, she fires it just like that. Now, there is still one problem that's left when we're firing the pistol like this, which is that we can't set any boost die, any difficulty die, anything like that uh, in uh, the role without going back into the character sheet and setting it on the character sheet. But there is a way to address this. Let's go back into the Olasi character sheet and let's go back into this blaster pistol macro. And we're going to add one more thing to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make we're going to ask for an input box when this macro runs. We do this by creating a question mark and then opening up the brackets. And then we're going to call uh, the input that's being created here dice pool. And then I'm going to close the brackets. So you do a question mark, open brackets, dice pool, close brackets. Hit the check button, mark button there to change that macro that way. And now when I hit Olasi, and then when I try to fire her blaster pistol, I get this input. And now in the dice pool, I can type in uh, the dice that I want to include in the check. So let's suppose I want to include two purple and one blue. B, we use for everything except the setback die. You just use the first letter of the color of the die. So 2P, 1B would be adding two purple and one blue die to it. I go 1BLK, that would add one black dice to the dice pool. Then I submit that and it adds the dice in down at the bottom that I wanted to use in the pool. So from now on, whenever a lossy's firing a blaster pistol, I just hit the blaster I hit the uh, blaster pistol button and I can add my difficulty in. This time I'll do one red, two purple, this is a particularly hard check, and three black, BLK. Okay. Hit the submit button and it rolls for me. Look at all the threat that she got on that shot. She actually hits for seven points, but uh, I would not want to be her right now with, uh, with all that threat. So there's uh, some basics and some advance for using weapons in the uh, Star Wars role-playing game. If uh, you have any other questions or you want to talk about some of the other mechanics or things that can be done, feel free to leave a question in chat. And um, I'm hoping soon to be returning with some information on how to run NPCs in the game. Until then, take care. And uh, as I said, feel free to leave me questions in